Hey guys, welcome back. And I have another vintage glider to show you today. This is a Multiplex LS7, and it's kind of a semi scale glider or sailplane. Um, I think, you know, it was more of a sport model, so it's not true scale. <clears throat> but it's, uh, I think, 3.3 meter wingspan. So it's fairly big, and this was made by Multiplex and uh, Carlton the Multiplex dude here in the States asked me to build this for him, and this is going to be another long project, but you know, we'll get it started, and um, this is actually a really nice kit, the quality is uh, really good, it's got um, Obichi sheeted wings, a glass fuselage. It's got a pretty extensive hardware pack and you know accessories, and it's got a really nice manual. Man manual. Uh, instruction booklet. Um, and I would imagine this kit was probably made. Probably in the early 90s, mid 90s, maybe possibly late 80s, but um, yeah, some stickers here, so very detailed instructions, which is nice. Um, I'll try to I'll try to uh, stick by the instructions as much as I can. Hardware pack. Carbon rod here. You know, maybe this was made a little later. I'm not sure. If anybody knows when this kit was produced, let me know. Could have been the early 2000s or something. So, we have a guy here. I don't know if that resembles Carlton, but uh, cockpit. Very heavy, by the way. Um, I don't do that kind of detailing and painting, so I won't be doing that. I, I might trim it and fit it, but uh, it's a canopy. And this is the uh, horizontal stabilizer. Again, Obichi. Appreciated. Oh, and the uh, the leading edge is already sanded, so that's that's really nice. There's some bits of wood here, and I imagine these are for the hinge line to glue here here to cap off the foam, and then probably have to glue some tips on and sand those. And uh, let me pull out the, I think we'll pull out the wings and uh, I'll put them on top of the box. So here's one of the wings. Again, this is Obichi covered and the leading edges are already sanded, which is amazing. And I just absolutely love these Obichi over foam wings. Brings back so many good memories. And the smell, there's just something special about the smell of these. That I really like. So, you see the aileron hinge line is cut like the elevator was. And I'm, I'm assuming there's some wood that goes in there. Um, they're probably probably going to call for tape hinges, which I I hate. <laughs> Here's the tip. Um, so, I might look at doing something different on the hinges. Because this thing does have to get covered. There's a servo bay here. So it should have an arm sticking out and then a horn uh, on, on the, the aileron surface. And um, there's a bay here for, uh, I think this is the spoiler servo. And the spoilers go here. I'm not sure if we're going to put spoilers on here. We might cut a flap in instead of spoilers, but we'll see. 
So that's one wing. The other wing's identical, and we'll just have a look at the uh, fuselage. And here's the fuselage, and um, this gel coat or paint. They painted this in the mold. Um, it's fairly yellowed, so I'm sure that if I cover the wings with a bright white, it won't match. So this might have to get painted. Um, there are um, these wing clips already installed in the fuselage, so that's pretty interesting. And then the hole for the joiner and the uh, alignment pins are are there. Are the joiners indented? The alignment pins are drilled, so that's cool. Let's push rod in here, probably for I don't know, probably the rudder. And the glass works very nice. It's a very dry layup. It's not crazy heavy. And there's a little bit more prefabrication in this than I thought, because there's actually a uh, the uh, tail fin block already already bonded in. And uh, I'm assuming maybe the oh no, there's a bell crank. I don't know if you can see it, but, but there's a there's a bell crank in here. Yeah, there's a pre-installed bell crank right here, so a um, uh, push rod's gonna go from one side of the bell crank up to the T-tail, and then another push rod here. And what's happening up here? Nothing has been done here, so this will have to get holes drilled and some mounting nuts bonded in. So quite a bit of work to do, that's for sure. Not gonna be a quick build. Oh, both push rods are installed there. That's 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 pretty good. A very good looking model. The airfoil definitely looks uh, like a scale airfoil. It's got uh, it's pretty fat, right? And it's got a lot of camber. I think it's a HQ. HQ 3.5-12 modified. It's probably a scale airfoil. So there's that. If I did have to repaint this, um, Glasswork looks very good, so I think I could just scuff this and shoot white over it, which will be nice. Let's see what else we can look at. So here's a bag of balsa. Maybe a few hardwood blocks. Balsa tray. Uh, obviously there's wing tips in here. This probably, these, probably for the rudder. Yeah, might have to actually make a built up rudder for this. That'll be interesting. A lot of wood there. And it has a uh, steel joiner rod. Looks to be about maybe 10 millimeters or so in diameter. Heavy. And I was just noticing uh, flying weight here, starting at 2,900 grams. So just to give you an idea, like a F3F plane might be 2,000, 2,100 grams. So this thing's fairly heavy. And um, I'll just have a look at the manual. I'm sure there's a various languages so this is I thought I saw German and Spanish maybe the English is yeah the English is in the back so if we go to the English section so the manual is really thick because there's the multiple languages so the English section is only a few pages long um, arrow toe release. I don't think that's going to happen. Toe hook support block for winch launching. We might put that in. And so, first couple of steps. 
opening up holes for the wing fairing and this is the general layout of the fuselage rudder and elevator servos tow release which we probably won't do looks like it has some anti-crush cross braces so it looks like we're starting out with putting these cross braces in and the servo tray just a balsa servo tray that's interesting canopy stuff and then mounting the wing to the fuselage tail diagram interesting they're asking for a former to be glued in here that's going to be tricky and here's the top of the tail so yeah we have to glue these nuts in and here's the push rod going to the elevator bell crank so some of, I don't know we'll have to look at some of this stuff like this push rod here is looking like a a dowel. Uh, we might change that for a carbon rod. But now that I'm looking at this, I'm, I'm wondering if I should just maybe put a servo in here. Maybe I'll put the servo in the tail. But that bell crank's already in there. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Looks like the spoiler servo in the wing. And oh, they are calling for actual hinges instead of tape. That's nice. That's basically it, really. So, yeah, there it is a quick look at uh, Multiplex LS7. I mean, it looks really good in the picture, that's for sure. Looks pretty sleek. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to start tinkering with this. And, uh, you know, I might put an hour or two a week in. It might take me 10 years to finish it. <laughs> we'll see. Well, I actually surprised myself and got quite a bit of work done on this Multiplex LS7. Um, starting at the nose here, I glued in the sort of radio tray, servo tray thing it's epoxied in and this tray is uh, comprised of two pieces of balsa ply it's pretty strong um, so there's a, a bottom piece that's glued on from the bottom but because it was balsa I I actually glued in some uh, hardwood pieces kind of where the uh, servo mounts or the screws for the servo mounts will go just to give those screws something to bite into and then there's a cross brace here uh, hardwood I think that's epoxied in and there's another one another one like back here that's glued in and I'm, I'm, I've built this like completely standard and I don't know if you can see this, maybe you can zoom in there, but there's this uh, teeny tiny uh, tow hook block in there. And the kit comes with the smallest tow hook I've ever seen, which is kind of surprising. And then towards the back on the tail, I've mounted or put in the hard points. Anyway, they're just... Uh, couple of blind nuts that are epoxied in here and I had to drill these holes and that all went really easy so that's nothing major and then one of the trickier parts was I had to glue in a um, I don't know if you can see it in here 
there's basically like a, a former right there to stiffen up the tail. And I had to get that in there and epoxy that in there. And you can see that bell crank's already installed. So quite a bit done. I was thinking I wasn't going to start this anytime soon, but I, I said why not. I just started it and um, I've actually really been enjoying building it. It's gone together really, really well. It's a re really nice kit. And now what I'm moving on to is I've cut free the uh, elevator. There was a channel routed out and then like the last 20 millimeters or so was still attached. So I cut that and uh, I have to glue on some balsa to face these parts. And then there's hardwood tip blocks that get glued on and smaller piece for the front. And they're hardwood so it's going to be a, a joy to sand but we'll figure that out. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, glue this stuff together and I'm going to just use some uh, some regular wood glue for that and I'll uh, get that going. Well, I glued on the um, sub trailing edges on the elevator and the moving part of the elevator and I guess, you know, typically you wait for that to dry and then sand it and then glue on the tip blocks, but I glued the sub trailing edge on then sanded it when the glue was still wet and attached the tip blocks just so I could get it all done in one shot and you can see that's kind of how they go on and I have the uh, little pieces of tip block there too so nothing further, further to do on that until the uh, wood glue is dry definitely give that maybe a day or something but uh, the rudder on this is built up and the gear are the pieces so these um, the side pieces are pre-cut and just holding them over the plan they seem pretty accurate so that's good and then there's um, some die cut ribs and they're numbered and so far everything in this kit has been numbered which is really nice so all the wood pieces have had numbers that correspond to what's in the instructions, so that's made things pretty easy. Um, so I'm gonna try to get this rudder built, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna build this on this page or just kind of eyeball it. Um, I'll read through the instructions, and then uh, I'll see what I'm gonna do. This is kind of the first half, or the start of the rudder. Um, got the ribs in and the sub spar here and the next thing to do is glue the other piece of sheeting on but I have to sand a taper into this this side and I have to sand this um, sub spar or whatever you want to call it the letter post down so with a big block so it lines up with the uh, the ribs and a little bit of sanding here too. So I'm gonna go ahead and attempt that and then I'm gonna get this other piece of sheeting on and after that I have to glue on like a, uh, the bottom piece which is hardwood and there's a very small piece that goes on top here and then there's um, another block here the big block and there's like like a piece of piece of plastic tubing and a few other things, so I kind of got to look at this a little more in depth. But uh, I'm just gonna worry about getting the sheeting on for now. Okay, so the rudder is basically framed up, and I got the second piece of sheeting on here, and um, got these clamps holding it together. And I modified this a little bit, or not modified, but added some material. I have a strip of um, unidirectional carbon fiber here going through the rudder on the trailing edge uh, with epoxy and on both sides of that I put a bead of epoxy and micro balloons and then there's some plastic sheeting and uh, it's clamped together on like hardwood rails and the hardwood is over the sheeting so it doesn't stick to the rudder and I did that because after I sanded the um, the taper and the balsa sheeting, it got real thin and f it seemed kind of flimsy to me, like um, it wouldn't take an impact, it could break easily or bend over easily, so 
I put that epoxy and carbon in there just to stiffen that up and give me something kind of rigid to sand to. So that basically completes the framing of the rudder. I have to put uh, some some blocks here and the, the tips. Um, but I think I'm going to end this video here. Actually, we got a lot done. Still waiting for these parts to dry up, then we can start sanding. But pretty happy with this. And again, it's going together really easy. Uh, it's a very nice kit. And uh, hopefully in the next video we'll finish up the rudder and maybe work on how it hinges to the fuselage. And we might start the wings. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in part two.